The Linux Show, starring Nick Carter, Master Detective, presented by Acme, America's great producer of fine quality paint. This is the story of a man known the world over as one of the most daring and resourceful characters in the history of detective fiction. A man whose name has become a symbol of the triumph of right and justice over the sinister forces of crime and lawlessness. A man recognized as one of the great masters of deduction. Nick Carter, Master Detective. Today's baffling case, The Witch of Dunderberg Mountain. Another exciting chapter dramatized from the life story of Nick Carter. In just a moment, we'll find how a curious old moldy coin lured Nick Carter into a strange community, brooded over by Dunderberg Mountain and a collection of macabre superstitions. But now, millions of American families are happier these days because women who run their homes wisely have learned about Chemtone, the miracle wall finish, which makes every home more bright and inviting. Now those same wise homemakers are learning the modern way to new beauty for woodwork, furniture, and floors. The three great Linux home brighteners. Linux clear gloss to give lustrous, longer-lasting protection to every wood and linoleum surface. Linux cream polish to renew the sleek, gleaming beauty of fine furniture. And Linux self-polishing wax, the amazing new wax finish to lend rich, satiny loveliness to any floor, wood, linoleum, or tile. Take the modern shortcut to new home beauty with the three great Linux home brighteners. You'll find them all at your hardware, paint, or department store. Your headquarters also for Chemtone, the miracle wall finish. And now for today's exciting case from the life of Nick Carter. Today's thrilling adventure starts in the usual place, the gloomy old brownstone mansion at the corner of 4th and 5th. Yes, looking at that comfortable old Victorian mansion with its gay flowered window boxes, its shiny brass door knocker and the bright and glistening windows, no one would ever guess that those panes are bulletproof. The doors, windows, and chimneys burglar-proof and that on the top floor is probably the world's best equipped laboratory for the scientific study of crime. As a matter of fact, our master detective is at this moment closeted in his laboratory, while Patsy Bowen, his efficient and long-suffering secretary, holds the world at bay in his second-story office and consulting room. Finally, the hidden door that leads to a secret passageway creaks open, and enter Nick Carter. Patsy, will you get that blame thing fixed? Not me. The way you gumshoe around without making a sound gives me the jumps. Every time I think I'm in a perfectly empty room and suddenly look up and see you at that old roll-top desk which you won't let me throw out, as if you just materialized out of thin air, it makes my heart do nip-ups. I just... Yes, Patsy, your grammar's a bit thumb diddled, but I think I get your drift. You want me to stamp her on a bumper to furniture like the average man? I do not. I... Tell me, did you finish whatever it was you were puttering around with up in the laboratory? I did. I examined the shirt the man accused of the Pemberton murder was wearing the night Daly Pemberton was killed. But that shirt had been washed and ironed here. Quite so. The murderer made the common mistake of believing that a thorough washing and boiling would eliminate traces of his crime. But not with the modern benzidine test, sweetheart. No? Oh? Took me less than three drops to reveal the presence of bloodstains. Mr. Pemberton's blood. Oh, you needn't look so pleased. I'm always pleased when I've managed to end a criminal career. Murder so often becomes a habit. Huh? Anything happened when I was upstairs? Anything, everything. The mayor called, the head of freedom from Moravia called, Lieutenant Riley called, the butcher called. Trivia, all trivia. Anything worth bothering about down in the waiting room? Mrs. DeLacy Trump's pearls. What about them? Stolen. Tell her to report to insurance company. She can't. Seems some gigolo swiped them. She doesn't want her husband to find out. Not interested. Old Mr. DeWitt Hemingway's second wife has run away. She should have done it years ago. Not interested. Mr. Roger Winthrop, author and lecturer, has taken a house in some forsaken spot up the river. He's writing a history of the folklore and superstitions of the Catskills. He wants you I to... I never be... collaborate. Besides, what I know about the River Valley superstitions, and they're plenty gory, he can dig out of the records for himself. 
Not interested. Would you not jump to conclusions, Nick? He does not want you to collaborate. His servant has been hexed. The local witch has put a curse on him. And, and he's he... had a succession of headaches or corns or something. Tell him to wear a massive fetida bag. I believe that's the usual. It's remedy. too late. The servant, whose name was Jacob, died about dawn this morning. A violent and horrible death. His last words were something about a descent into hell. Well, why didn't you say so? You wouldn't let me. Send Mr. Winthrop up. Well, send him up. What are we waiting for? Keep your shirt on, Nick. I can't have him shot out of a cannon. Wait till I click my inner office gadget, can't you? Butch. Hi, Angel Face. Butch, Mr. Carter will see Mr. Roger Winthrop. You mean the guy with the ribbons on his glasses? Right the very first time. Okay, Mr. Winthrop. Hey, he's halfway up the stairs already. Hmm. Athletic for an author, I'm fancy. Come in. Mr. Carter, Mr. Nick Carter, where is he? Right behind you. Oh, Mr. Carter, I am... I know, Roger Winthrop. Author, I am now engaged in collecting data for my latest novel. In fact, I have already... Has this novel anything to do with your servant's death? Why, uh, no. Then skip it. Uh, of course. But if it weren't for the novel, I never would have rented the old Brocken house. And we'd never have met the old witch. You said witch? He did. You keep out of this, Betsy. What old witch do you mean, Mr. Winter? Who is this, sir? Uh... I'm Nick Carter's secretary, amanuensis, general factotum, and the lady who sews the buttons on his shirt. Now, let's get back to the witch. She sounds more interesting. Thanks. Of course, I don't actually think she is one. Still, the natives who live around the Brocken farm are quite convinced of the fact. It seems she's placed a curse on people before this, mostly young boys who taunted her or stole her fruit. Young William Tappan was thrown from his father's farm horse and dragged twice round the barn. Hendrik Vandervoort fell out of an apple tree and broke his arm. And Johnny Upsendike had scarlet fever and jaundice both at the same time. Seems to me I've heard of accidents like that happening to kids even without their being hacked. Yes, Patsy, but that's not the significant part of the narrative. What is? The boy's last names. Tappan, Vandervoort, Upsendike. I take it, Mr. Winthrop, the old Brocken farm you've rented is in a Dutch community. It is. Up the river at the foot of the Donderberg, wild, hag-ridden country. Mm -hmm. Those families settled there before the Revolution and have married and intermarried ever since, all but the Brockins. They seem to have been disliked right from the beginning. Some say they aren't Dutch at all, but Hessians. Yes. Let me see. Brocken. Isn't that the name of that mountain in Germany where all the witches are supposed to gather on Walpurgis Nacht? Yes, that's why the Brockens are said to have settled where they did. Because old Donderberg, the local mountain, bears a strange resemblance to the Brocken. I see. Local gossip has it that on the eve of May Day, which, as you know, is Walpurgis Nacht, all the family and their cats, they've always had black cats, would swoop up the chimney on broomsticks and fly away to Donderberg Mountain for some sort of witch's Sabbath. Then this witch who's supposed to have hexed your servant Jacob is, I gather, one of the famous Brocken. She's the last of them. Miss Hermina Brocken is an old maid, and when she dies, the family will be extinct. And high time, too, if you ask me. Now, you don't really think she's a witch. No, but she's a vindictive, highly neurotic, I might even say dangerous female. And you think she killed Jacob? I do. She laid a hex on him last week, made a rag doll out of an old scarf of his she managed to steal. She named the doll Jacob, of course, and then began sticking pins into it. And last night, or rather early this morning, he died. Tell me exactly what happened. Well, I'd rented the Brocken house for the summer. It seemed to have the sort of weird, not to say sinister, background I needed for my novel. Did Miss Hermina go with the house, Mr. Winter? Oh, no, no. She and her cat moved out to a sort of farmer's cottage. Oh. I insisted on that. I can't abide cats. Well, as I was saying, last night I was in my study scribbling away the better part of the night. It was a peculiarly black night, you may remember. This is what is called the dark of the moon. Yes, yes, I know. <laughs> well, uh, finally I became aware that everything was unusually quiet. And then I realized I'd worked through the entire night, and this was that queer, unearthly silence that comes just before the dawn. Suddenly, I was conscious of a dull, muffled thud, a thud that was almost a clang. <coughs> what was that? <laughs> Curious how strange sounds become at night. Sounded like the clang of a coffin lid. <laughs> Better lay off work for tonight, Winthrop, old boy. First thing you know, you'll be imagining ghostly footsteps. Good Lord, what's that? Something's coming round the corner of the house. That's the tool house door. Someone's trying to get in. Oh, this is ridiculous. Better go see what it is before my imagination makes a fool of me. I'll take the lamp. It's probably nothing at all. Just the wind rattling the lock. But there isn't any wind tonight. <laughs> Pull yourself together, Winthrop. Down the steps to the woodshed. Yes, something is moving the lock. 
Someone's out there. Some. Wait till I unlock the door. Uh, I'm done for. Jacob, uh, what are you doing out here this time of night? Jacob, what's wrong with you? Don't go near it. Don't go. She's right. It goes straight down to hell. But I... I, I... Good Lord, he's having convulsions. <laughs> Jacob. Jacob. And what happened then, Mr. Winthrop? Jacob died right there in my arms. It was horrible. As the death rattle left his throat, his right hand relaxed and something rolled to the floor with a metallic clink. I picked it up and brought it here, thinking it might serve as a clue to this whole horrible business. Let me see. Here. Hmm. Black with age. Looks like a metal slug of some kind. Betsy. Hmm? How about giving this a going over with that metal polish you keep around for polishing up doorknobs? With pleasure. Right here in this drawer. I keep it handy, Mr. Winthrop, because all the hardware in this old house is brass. And I always say, what's the good of having real brass furnishings unless Not you keep them well... Not interested, Betsy. Postpone the housekeeping. Well, Mr. Winthrop, from your description of Jacob's death, the panting, the dragging footsteps, and the final convulsions, I'd say he was probably poisoned. No possibility of suicide, I suppose. Of course not. It was the witch, Miss Hermina Brocken. I told you she'd put a curse on him. Curses don't cause convulsions, Mr. Winthrop. I never said they did. The point was she hated Jacob enough to want him dead. Why? Well, I, I suppose it was my fault in a way... I told Jacob to make up to the gold girl in order to get her to tell him all the local ghost stories. He unearthed plenty. Some of them, like the Headless Horseman and the crew of Hendrick Hudson who go bowling in the mountains whenever there's a storm, have already been recorded by Washington Irving. Yes, yes. Then there's the two spectral riders who are supposed to be the ghosts of Major Andre and General Benedict Arnold. They met and rode through that territory, you know, the night Arnold sold out to the enemy. Yes, yes. Then there's the story of a lost treasure that's supposed to be cursed, not to mention a bat woman and a black vulture who appears whenever there's to be a death in the valley. Interesting, but irrelevant. Why did Miss Brocken hate Jacob? Certainly not because he worried those stories out of her. Well, no. As a matter of fact, I rather imagine Jacob overdid his attentions to the old girl. When she discovered he had a wife and five children in the Bronx... Well, she turned on him like a vixen. It was all Peter and I could do to tear him away from her. She was trying to scratch out his eyes. Hell hath no fury and so forth. Quiet, Betty. Just who is Peter, Mr. Winthrop? A local character who does the gardening for me. He's, well, not exactly bright, but he can make anything grow. How does he get on with Miss Brocken? Scared to death of her. Carries a piece of cold iron in his pocket all the time he's around the place. If you touch cold iron, you know, a witch can't harm you. Speaking of cold metal, how's this for a handsome hunk of stuff? This shines better than our doorknobs now that I've got the tarnish off. Oh, very interesting. That coin, Patsy, is gold. What? A British guinea, to be exact, minted in the reign of George III. In those days, coins like this were called traitor's gold. For Pete's sake, why? Every British soldier who brought in a member of Washington's army received one of these. And every member of Washington's forces who gave himself up got one, too. Where well, in the world do you suppose Jacob got hold of this? To answer that, we'll have to make a visit to the Dunderberg. Yes, Mr. Winthrop. I think you brought us a problem that's even more interesting than you suspect. Well, just what is the significance of the piece of Drater's gold found clutched in the dead man's hand? Is it connected in any way with the strange events which are happening in the shadow of old Dunderberg Mountain? We'll see in just a moment. Linac self-polishing wax is practical proof that there is something new under the sun. New beauty, new protection, new skid resistance for all your floors and linoleum. If you haven't used new Linac self-polishing wax, you haven't learned how different, how perfect a quick-drying wax can be. For Linex self-polishing wax, developed by leading research chemists to give you the best, lends a satiny appearance, a lasting protection, real anti-skid finish to every floor surface in your home. The formula of Linex self-polishing wax is completely new. It contains the greatest possible amount of genuine carnauba wax. And the underwriters' laboratories have proved that linoleum, hardwood, and rubber tile are actually less slippery after Linex self-polishing wax has been applied. When you walk on a Linex surface, you can actually feel a difference. Besides, it takes only a jiffy to wipe on, 
drying quickly to a handsome luster without tiresome rubbing. So it's just good sense to choose genuine Linux self-polishing wax. And of course, if you want the modern type finish, which is brushed on, or even longer lasting protection, use Linux clear gloss varnish, which dries overnight to a beautiful gloss finish that protects your floors and linoleum amazingly for months. Whichever you choose, Linux self-polishing wax or Linux clear gloss varnish, ask for it by name, Linux, and get the best. You'll find all three great Linux home brighteners and Chemtone, the miracle wall finish, at hardware, paint, and department stores everywhere. And now back to today's exciting case. As we pick up Nick Carter and Patsy, they are following Roger Winthrop along a desolate country road to the Brocken Farm, where Winthrop's servant, Jacob, has recently died a violent death. It is twilight, and the sinister hulk of the Dunderberg Mountain broods over the landscape. I'm not surprised that people who live around here believe in witches and curses and hidden treasure, Mr. Winthrop. If you'd spent a couple of months around here the way I have, Miss Bowen, you'd believe in superstitions, too. Things like that don't seem possible back in the midst of the city's traffic. But up here, time seems to stand still. Here, people are still living in the dark ages. I noticed as we came along, most of the barns had hex signs painted on them. Nick, have you noticed the clouds gathering behind that mountain? Yes. I imagine the old Dutchman will start their game of nine pins any time now. Hope we reach your house, Mr. Winthrop, before the storm breaks. It's just over the next rise, Mr. Carter. Here's the gate behind the lilac bush. Oh, that would be called in very good repair. After you, Patsy. Thank you. That's the house down there in the hollow. And that's Peter sitting outside the tool house door. I gave him strict instructions not to let anyone move the body until you arrive. I know you detectives prefer to find your clues undisturbed. It's sometimes helpful. Why doesn't Peter sit inside the tool house? Because he's afraid of the dead. Oh. There's a superstition around here that the soul of anyone who's died a violent death is afraid of being alone and always tries to take along a companion. <gasps> oh, what's that? Something up there in that tree. It's there, silhouetted against the sky. A black cat. It's Miss Brocken's Hecuba. They're inseparable. If that cat's around... Then the Brocken female isn't far behind. I wondered who's been following us the last quarter mile. Nick, I didn't see or hear a thing. You... You don't mean she's invisible or something? Calm yourself, Patsy. I'll admit she's kept out of sight, but no disembodied spirit breaks twigs and rustles dead leaves. She's been perfectly audible to anyone that took the trouble to listen. Hear that? She just stepped on a loose pebble. My teeth are chattering, though. I couldn't hear an avalanche. Oh, Nick, I don't like this place. Easy, Patsy. Oh, here comes Peter. Poor guy, he looks relieved to see us. Uh, I thought you was never coming. I told you I wouldn't stay if you didn't get back before nightfall. But we did, Peter. This is Mr. Nick Carter, the famous detective. Uh, He'll find out what killed Jacob. The light's fading fast. Better make our examination before it's completely dark. Oh, Patsy, it may not be nice. You want to stay out here? With that woman and her cat crawling through the bushes? And a storm coming up beside? Oh, thank you. I'm coming inside, no matter what's in there. Hold the flashlight steady, Betsy. It's horrible, isn't it? Mm. Extreme rigor mortis and marked tannic constriction of the muscles. Jaws too firmly clamped together to permit any investigation of the oral cavity. We can take a look at the inside of the lips. Hmm. Oh, the poison, whatever it was, was violent, but I don't think it was administered by mouth. No. Now, well, let's see. Now, rest on the instep of the shoes between the sole and heel. Heavy boots and corduroy trousers, no, nothing the lower limbs. Ah, hands bare. Yes, yes, look here. The two small punctures of the right thumb. Yes. Winthrop, help me roll back a sleeve. Right, Mr. Carter. Ah, here we are. Two more. And here again. And again. And all the punctures have already started the gangrene. That's how the poison entered the body. Uh -huh. It's the evil eye. Those two dents. It's the mark of the evil eye. They burn straight through you until you're dead. Interesting idea, Peter. But what killed Jacob was quite a bit more deadly than any evil eye. You mean you know who killed him? Definitely. The question now is to find where the killer's hiding. But, Nick, I... Let's see if we can get a line on how Jacob spent his last 12 hours. Get the small microscope out of my zipper gate, will you, Patsy? Oh, and you might prepare a few slides. Right, you are, 
just exactly what you're doing that for, Mr. Carter. Uh, cleaning the dead man's nails, I mean. A good scientific detective, Mr. Withrop, can pretty well deduce from what he finds under any person's nails where that person has been and what he's done for some time previous. Oh, a slide, please, Patsy. Here you are. This is my most powerful lens, of course. This flashlight isn't as strong as one could wish. Still. You had anything, Nick? Yes. Quite a few things. He ate a piece of chocolate cake for dinner with a finger to put. Sawed quite a bit of wood. Minute bits of sawdust. That was yesterday afternoon. He also plucked a chicken recently and polished the furniture. Tiny globules of very fine oil. But the most interesting ingredient in the whole collection is a certain tiny spored mold or fungus. A great deal of it, as a matter of fact. Maybe he went out picking wildflowers in the woods. No. This particular fungus only grows in places where there's a great deal of moisture and where sunlight never reaches. Any place like that around here, Mr. Winthrop? Basement? Spring house? No, no, the basement's bone dry and there is no spring house. How about a well? There are few enough improvements on the place. No electricity, no telephone. But we do have a hand pump in the kitchen sink. Which means if there's a well under it, Jacob couldn't very easily get down into it. I'd say it would be absolutely impossible. Mm. Wait a minute. There's some sort of boarded up stonework with a padlock out back of the barn. I remember someone told me it's a condemned cistern or well of some sort. Ah, yeah. that's the witch's well. You'll be wise to stay away from it. It's the way straight down to hell. The way to hell? Yeah. Weren't those Jacob's last words before he died? Why, well, yes, Mr. Carter. Come on, show me the place. Unless I'm very much mistaken, that's where we'll find the answer to this problem. Uh. At the bottom of the well. Sounds as if Henrik Hudson's crew had started a game of ninepins. Oh, that means there's evil abroad tonight. Nick, Nick, I just remembered something. Now what? Isn't tomorrow the first of May? That means this is Walt Purchase night. When witches ride and graves give up their dead. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that one sounded like a strike. This is the system, Mr. Carter, or whatever it is. I thought you said it was padlocks, Mr. Winthrop. It always has been. Not now. A lot lying on the ground. Staples are all bent and twisted. Looks as if someone had broken it. And the cover's been moved recently, too. Look here, Nick. These scratches on the stone. Patsy, I do believe you're finally beginning to notice things. You know where you can go, don't you? Yeah, that's just where you will go if you get too interested in that well. Now, look here, Peter. Uh, you're a big boy now. You don't really think Miss Brocken's a witch? I know she is. Ever see her ride a broomstick? No, but I've seen her go down this well. When was this? Winter nights, me and my brother Timmy would hide in the hay of that old barn and wait for her to come along. First, we'd hear the scrape as she pulled off the lid, and then we'd see her climb down inside with the lantern in her teeth and that old black cat sitting on her shoulder. Why do you think she did it? Climb down inside, I mean. To get warm, of course. It's nice and cozy in hell on a winter's night. She never went down in summer? Oh, why should she? It's hot enough right here in the valley in summertime. Very interesting observation, Peter. And it verifies my hunt just how Jacob was killed and why. What do you mean, Mr. Carter? Help me pull the lid off this well and I'll show you. Here, take that side now. Take right, I'm here. Uh, there. That does it. Now, Patsy, give me that flashlight. Here you are. Thanks. Now, let's see what we've got. Ah, yes. Notice those rusty spikes driven into the stonework to form a sort of ladder? And notice where the rust has been scraped recently. That's how Jacob got it on his boots. He followed Miss Brocken's example and climbed down into the well. You'll also notice that the stones are covered with that curious fungus we found under his... Nick. Nick. Nick, she's watching us. Over there under that apple tree. And the cat's standing on her shoulder. We've been waiting for you, Miss Brocken. I think you can tell us how Jacob died. It was his own greed killed him. I warned him no man could go down there and live. You knew he died if he went down into the well, and yet you let him go. I did not. I refused him the key, I did. But he broke open the lock like a thief when no one was looking. He wouldn't listen, and so he had to die. And I'm not sorry. You killed him, you old... Easy, Winthrop. Miss Brocken isn't responsible for Jacob's death. Then who is? You said yourself he was poisoned. Quite right. 
And I think if I drop this rock down into the well, we may rouse the killers. <laughs> Aye, if you do, they'll play you their devil's tattoo. Oh, Nick, be careful. I'm afraid. Here goes the stone. Now, listen. Oh, Nick. Nick, I heard it. Good Lord, what is it? Oh. Rattlesnake. Forget this is rattlesnake country. And I rather imagine there's a rattlesnake nest down there. Aye, that there is. Old ones and the young ones, the darlings. I told Jacob not to go down in that well. I told him he'd go to hell, but all he cared for was gold. And so he's dead. Dead! Dead! And I'm glad! <laughs> There's one thing I still don't understand about that Dunderberg mystery. Why did Jacob go down into the well? And why wasn't Miss Brocken bitten when she did the same thing? I'll answer the last question first. Miss Brocken was careful to make all her descents into the well in winter. Well, so what? You see, when snakes hibernate, they become cold and almost lifeless, as can a snake charmer. It's an old trick of the trade to put snakes on ice just before a show makes them quite harmless. Oh. And as for the reason that drew both Miss Brocken and Jacob into the well... I deduced from the sample Jacob had in his hand that the Brocken Well is the hiding place of Benedict Arnold's famous lost treasure. What's that? Well, Major Andre is supposed to have given Arnold a golden guinea for every man then garrisoned at West Point. Arnold undoubtedly hid the money and didn't have time to dig it up when he had to flee for his life after his treachery was uncovered. But if the Brocken family knew where it was, why didn't they use it themselves? Probably because they felt it was tainted money with a curse on it. I see. Well, thanks, Nick. Now, in just a moment, I want you and Patsy to give us a preview of next week's exciting case. Everybody's heard the old saying that home is where the heart is. And because home does matter most, it deserves the most careful attention you can give it. Keep your home at its loveliest with the three great Linux home brighteners. Linux cream polish, for example, renews the original gleaming beauty of your fine furniture. The handsome appearance of the wood grain itself in one quick, easy application. That's because Linex Cream Polish cleans as it polishes, saving one whole step in your cleaning day routine. The cloudy look of old polish and dust, the blurry appearance of finger marks, are erased as if by magic. And Linex Cream Polish leaves no surface film of oil for dust to cling to. It helps conceal disfiguring scratches, too. So take the streamlined way to furniture care. Linex Cream Polish for fine furniture. Tell your dealer you want the product that cleans as it polishes. Ask for all three great Linex home brighteners. Linex Cream Polish, Linex Self-Polishing Wax, and Linex Clear Gloss Varnish at your nearest hardware, paint, or department store. And now let's hear from Nick Carter himself. Well, Nick, what about next week's story? Next week, then, I think I'll tell you the story of how an heir mysteriously disappeared before it was born. And a curious and frantic case it was. When a woman who's going to have a baby any minute disappears into thin air right on the threshold of a famous maternity hospital, then she... Now, Patsy, don't give the whole plot away. Wait until next week. What do you call a story, Nick? I call it... The Vanishing Lady. Nick Carter, Master Detective, is featured in Street and Smith magazines. Lon Clark is starred as Nick with Helen Choate as Patsy. Original music is played by Lou White. The programs are written by Edith Miser, and any resemblance therein to actual persons living or dead is purely coincidental. The entire production is under the direction of Jock McGregor. <laughs> Nick Carter, Master Detective, is presented at this time and over these same stations each week by the three great Linux home brighteners. Linux clear gloss varnish, Linux cream polish, and Linux self-polishing wax. Created by Acme, America's great producer of fine quality paint. This is Ken Powell speaking for the thousands of Linux dealers all over America and saying so long until next week. This is the Mutual Broadcasting Systems.